In one of the recent Scarlet and Violet DLC trailers, we got something that I think was a pleasant surprise to a lot of people, and that was evolutions of previous Pokemon. This is always a welcome feature whenever it happens, but what if we got even more evolutions like this in the DLC? I think that many people would definitely like to see some more, and so we're gonna look at what that could look like in today's video. Let's check it out. So, quick question for you guys. When you're playing Pokemon, do you just leave the player in their default outfit for the entire game? The answer to that is probably a hard no, because you obviously are going to customize the heck out of them. Today's sponsor, Opera GX, is the same way, because it is a web browser that is customizable AF, as the kids would say. For example, if you're tired of your browser hogging all your RAM, Opera GX can customize how much RAM your browser's allowed to use. If you'd like something a little more fun than a black or white backdrop since we're in the 21st century now, you can visually and audibly customize Opera GX to your heart's content as well with mods. For example, this GX Boy mod comes with background music, keyboard sounds, sounds when you open and close your tabs, it changes the theme and colors of the browser, it has a wallpaper, and it's all customizable, meaning you can turn on or off whatever you want and mix and match it with other mods. And you can find all of these mods and many more at the GX store so you can customize your browser to your heart's content. Opera GX even has an import tool that'll let you import all your settings from your previous browser so you won't miss a beat. And oh by the way, it's also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. This is easily the most fun that I've ever had using a browser, and it's honestly not even close. So get in on the fun by downloading Opera GX for yourself with the link in the description below, because it's free, it's amazing, it's fun, it just feels so much better than any other browser I have ever used, and checking it out and showing Opera some love even helps the channel too, so it's honestly a win all the way around. Again, download Opera GX with the link in the description, and a big thank you to them for supporting the channel. Now we may or may not get any more new evolutions in this DLC at all, this video is mostly just for the fun of it, but if we did, it's possible that we could get another Gen 8 Galar Pokemon evolution, since the two evolutions that we know of to this point, as I said from Applin and Duralodon, are both from the Galar region. So Game Freak seems to be looking in Galar's direction for whatever reason, and so I thought I would do the same too, and create a new evolution for Indeedy. This is Indubidy, and it is an evolution of Indeedy that I have created with this Scarlet and Violet DLC concept in mind. As I said, I knew I wanted to give another Gen 8 Pokemon an evolution since that's what we're seeing to this point, and when I looked at the Galar decks, Indeedy kinda just popped out at me as a good candidate. Obviously, it doesn't evolve at all, just like Duraludon, which makes it a good evolution, and it's also just kind of a unique looking Pokemon, so I think it would be cool if it did receive the evolution treatment. And I personally think that Indubidy ended up turning out pretty dang cool. First off, it is a Psychic Dark type coming off of Indeedee's Psychic Normal type, and the reason why it's gained that Dark type also has to do with how it's evolved coming off of Indeedee's inspiration. As many of you may know, Indeedee in both of its forms are based on butlers and maids, and so I thought for an evolution of these butler and maid based Pokemon, it would only make sense to have a Pokemon that is based on the Master of the house, quote-unquote, aka the person that is employing the butlers and maids that Indeedee are based on and is basically the rich mansion owner type. I feel like that's a really natural progression for Indeedee to take, which is why I thought it worked so well as a candidate for an evolution. 
That is also why it has gained the dark type as well, because it's become a rich, greedy, mansion owner type of Pokemon, almost like an Ebenezer Scrooge, which is also loosely inspiring this Pokemon because that is kind of the archetype we're going for here, and because Ebenezer Scrooge is obviously from the Christmas Carol story, which was by Charles Dickens, who is an English author, and Galar is based on the UK. So that element really helps us to add even even more UK inspiration into this Pokemon. And on the topic of adding even more English and British inspiration into this Pokemon, you might have noticed how Ndidi's horns have taken a different shape upon evolving into Indubidi and have also turned white. This is very intentional because the white in particular is meant to have its horns resemble the fancy white wigs that many British people are known to have worn in the 17 and 1800s, which also helps to add a sense of fanciness and pompousness, if you will, that really goes along perfectly with the rich guy aesthetic that we're going for here. So not only does the inspiration work really well here in my opinion, but we were also able to make this Pokemon even more British than it already was, which is just the cherry on top. And as if it couldn't get any better, the hair that you can see on Indubity's cheeks that resembles a pair of lamb chops that a rich old English person would stereotypically have are considered to be lamb chops because this Pokemon, as an evolution of Indeedee, is a lamb goat based creature. So, not only is it an amazing pun, but it also just goes to show how this design comes together absolutely perfectly, at least in my own opinion anyway, and why Indeedee would make for a great Pokemon to receive an evolution. Oh, and before I forget, I need to cover this Pokemon's name because it obviously has a pretty interesting and unique name. Indubity comes from the word indubitably, which is a fancy word that you would hear a posh, rich British person say, similar to the word indeed, which is where Indeedee's name comes from, which is also a stereotypical word that butlers and maids will say in response to the people that employ them. So I thought that that worked out really nicely as well, and is just one more thing about this Pokemon that, in my opinion, turned out really well. We are going to go ahead and move on to our next Pokemon though, and that next Pokemon would be an evolution of Zebstrika. Now I've chosen Zebstrika here to give an evolution to, because Zebstrika number one is a Gen 5 Pokemon, and we saw a lot of Unova connections in this latest Scarlet and Violet DLC trailer, which I talk about more in detail in this video, so be sure to check it out if you would like, and along with being a Unova Pokemon, Zebstrika is also a Pokemon that always felt a little underwhelming to me. I really love Blitzel personally, but Zebstrika just didn't quite fulfill my expectations, so I thought that giving Zebstrika another evolution and making it a full three-stage evolutionary line would be really, really cool. And that is what resulted in the creation of Zebralitz. Now, Zebralitz, just like its pre-evolutions, is an electric type. But on top of that, upon evolving, it also gains the fighting type as well, making for an electric fighting type Pokemon. I decided to add the fighting type to a Zebstrika evolution because not only is the electric fighting type really cool and also really rare because the only Pokemon that have it currently are the members of the Palmy family, but also it actually fits the Zebstrika line pretty well because zebras are actually known to be pretty aggressive. And since that would allow me to not only give this Pokemon a second typing, but a typing that would also change it up compared to its pre-evolutions and give it a really unique type combo as well, just made it the perfect fit and the perfect opportunity in my opinion. However, Zebralitz is not just based on a zebra this time around, because as per the suggestion of my good friend Oscar, we also decided to make this Pokemon partially based on an Okapi as well, which is a type of animal that isn't a zebra but does have zebra-like stripes. 
giving it a little bit of this Okapi inspiration allows us to make this Pokemon not just a bigger Zebra and not just a bigger Zebstrika, and actually help it to stand out a little bit more as a final evolution. That is also where the dark red color on its body comes from as well, and it also just so happens to correlate with the fighting type too, to help communicate that that much more, and once again, it just helps this Pokemon to be all the more different and less samey compared to its pre-evolution. Finally, when it comes to its name, Zebralitz is a pretty straightforward yet perfectly applicable name that helps this Pokemon's design to come full circle really well in my own opinion. It comes from the words Zebra, because it's a Zebra, and Blitz, which not only refers to its fighting type as blitzing someone means to attack them fastly and aggressively, but Blitz is also the German word for lightning as well, meaning that this single word describes its new dual type combination absolutely perfectly. Additionally, the words Zebra and Blitz are also words that are featured in each of this Pokemon's two pre-evolutions, with Blitzel and Zebstrika, so this name does a good job of incorporating its past evolutions into this new design to show how it's the final evolution and everything has finally come full circle with this Pokemon. And like I said, for as basic as it sounds, it actually works really well, which I think is pretty cool. And if anything were to happen like this in the Scarlet and Violet DLC, I would definitely be down for it. Moving along though, the next Pokemon that I've decided to give an evolution to is Hoot Hoot and Noctowl. The reason why I've decided this is because, first off, Hoot Hoot is one of the Pokemon that is being newly added in the DLC that wasn't present in the base Scarlet and Violet game, so theoretically it could get an evolution because of that. Secondly, Hoot Hoot and Noctowl are one of the regional bird families that are only a two-stage line, and since most of the regional birds consist of a three-stage family, I think this makes for a good opportunity to give these Pokemon an evolution and have them be able to join the three-stage regional bird club. So it is for those reasons that I have created Umbrowl. Umbrowl is a dark, flying-type evolution of Noctowl that is particularly focused on the nighttime aesthetic. Most of the time, when you see a Noctowl evolution created by the fans, it is a psychic flying type, and this is fitting because Noctowl is obviously an owl, and they are very wise, therefore the psychic type makes sense. However, I wanted to go against the status quo with this evolution, which is part of the reason why I went with the dark type here instead. Secondly though, the reason why I went with the dark type in particular is because, as I said, Umbrowl is taking on a nighttime aesthetic. One of the biggest and most central things that was introduced in Pokemon Gold and Silver, where Hoot Hoot and Noctowl debuted, was the day and night cycle, and they were specifically made to show off the nighttime feature, hence why Noctowl gets its name from Noct Colonel and Owl. However, despite being named after the night and appearing at night time, it doesn't really embrace that nighttime feel any more than that, and it's really a surface level connection that's going on here. That is why I thought it would be cool to create an evolution of these Pokemon that could appear in the DLC that fully embraces this nighttime theme. I think there is definitely still room for something like this within the Noctowl family, because if you make Noctowl a middle evolution by giving it an evolution, it would make sense that it wouldn't quite be fully to that nighttime theme and that dark typing just yet, but it is kind of getting there with its name like we just mentioned. However, once it evolves again, then it fully grows into its own and fully embraces the nighttime theme that also gives it the dark typing. 
And just like Noctowl, this is also where Umbrowl's name comes from as well, as it comes from Umbra, which refers to shadow or darkness, describing it as not only a night-themed Pokemon, but also a dark type, and Owl, not only because it's an owl, but also because that's where its pre-evolution Noctowl's name comes from as well. Furthermore, it also comes from the word brow, because not only does Noctowl have a very prominent brow, but Umbrowl has an even more prominent brow. So this name, short of Umbreon also existing, is honestly perfect in my opinion. I've always personally thought it was a shame that Hoot Hoot only evolved once, because Hoot Hoot, in terms of at least the first forms, is easily one of my favorite regional birds ever. It just doesn't quite live up to its potential, in my opinion, with its evolutions, and I feel like something like Umbrowl could definitely help to make that happen. With that said though, that is the glimpse that I wanted to provide on what it could be like if we do actually get more evolutions for previous Pokemon in the Scarlet and Violet DLC. Is this something that you would like to see when the DLC comes out, and would you like to see these evolutions or something like them appear in the actual games? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more if you're new because it really helps out. With that said, I'll be back very soon with another video as well, so until then, as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching this one, I really, really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.